When you break it down, the world of commercial aviation comes down to inches, centimeters, pounds, kilograms, and even ounces. And airlines and airline manufacturers are continuously trying to find ways to make their aircraft lighter and wider for the sole purpose of stuffing more passengers into the tube while gaining maximum fuel efficiency in the process. Well, now Airbus has managed to make its already popular flagship even better by maximizing its potential down to the fraction of an inch, stretching the A350 to the max. That's next on Maximus. Greetings everybody, Maximus here. I hope you're all doing well, wherever you may be all around this great big world of ours. Airbus has announced that it has delivered the first A350-900 with what they call the new 2022 production standard. This version has a lower empty weight and a higher maximum takeoff weight. It also has a wider cabin which opens up space for up to 30 extra seats in a three-class configuration. With these improvements, Airbus says it should make the A350 even more competitive in its class. Airbus recently announced that their 500th A350 and A350-900 was delivered to Iberia Airlines. The aircraft MSN-567 was also the 500th A350 to be delivered since the first A350 MSN-006 joined Qatar Airways in December of 2014. However, that first ever delivered A350 is currently grounded by Qatar as it is one of the A350s involved in litigation with Airbus over its paint quality, degradation, and corrosion issues. Airbus says that beyond a symbol, the 500th A350 marks an important milestone for Airbus and its growing versatile family, now including the A350-900 and 1000 and the newest Airbus A350 freighter. The new standard also adds enhanced performance with 25% less fuel burn and CO2 emissions and 50% less noise footprint compared to previous A350s. Airbus states that the 500th delivery also marks the introduction of what they have dubbed the new production standard of 2022, which brings additional performance and cabin improvements for both the 900 and 1000 series. Compared to previous standards, it brings a weight reduction of up to 1.2 tons by optimizing systems and structures and increasing the use of advanced materials, which already represent more than 75% of the aircraft. The maximum takeoff weight is also increased by 3 tons, allowing each model to maintain its maximum range capability beyond 8,000 nautical miles while carrying an increased payload. Airbus has also been working on the cabin. By introducing slightly thinner and different shaped sidewalls, there is 4 inches or 10 centimeters more space at the armrest level. Additionally, they increased the cabin by 35 inches or just over 76 centimeters longer without stretching the aircraft. So you might be wondering if they didn't enlarge or stretch the fuselage, how was this maximizing accomplished? Well, it starts with the use of advanced materials in the manufacturing of wiring, electrical systems, and brackets, as well as the introduction of more carbon fiber into the fuselage and wings. Airbus says in terms of performance, there is no physical change to the airframe itself, but they made changes to the way the A350 handles such as improvements in the way the flaps are controlled during takeoff and increasing the number of positions in order to improve performance at challenging airports or in difficult conditions. Also, a new system enabling faster landing gear retraction also increases performance and overall maximum takeoff weight increases from 280 to 283 tons on the 900 and from 316 to 319 tons on the 1000. As for the cabin width, Airbus says it is changing the frames of the new product standard aircraft and how they connect together to enable the interior of the cabin to fit two inches closer to the inside of the fuselage on both sides. Airbus calls this frame sculpting 
This allows for a total of 4 inches more cabin width at the armrest level, consisting of 2 inches per side from the armrest to roughly mid-thigh level, with a smaller amount of additional space between the tops of the windows and the overhead bins. The wider cabin is offered with 9 abreast seating in economy class, but Airbus is also offering a 10 abreast version with a 343 seat configuration. But Airbus says none of the first deliveries of the new standard are 10 abreast, all are still 9. Also, in the new Max version of the A350, they have added additional space in the forward and rear galleys, making for a smoother meal and drink service. To accomplish this, Airbus has pushed the rear pressure bulkhead of the aircraft backward by one full frame, allowing for 24 inches of extra space. In this space, Airbus is now offering either a large new V-shape extra-large galley, or what they call the ICE version or Increased Cabin Efficiency XL, offering a smaller galley space but one lavatory on either side of the aircraft. Each of these adds space for six full trolleys, plus the workspace and galley storage space above them. At the front of the new production standard aircraft, Airbus has optimized the space in two ways. First, the bulkhead with the crew cabin control unit and the two flight attendant seats at door 1L has been moved a few inches closer to the door. Second, the fourth seat in the flight deck has been swapped from floor mounted to wall mounted, enabling the flight deck wall to be pushed forward 5 inches. Ahead of 1L, there is thus the option of a new 4 trolley galley up from 3 trolleys with extra insert space or a 50 inch premium lavatory. On the other side of the gangway leading to the flight deck ahead of the number 1 right door, the access to the crew rest has been relocated resulting in a new greatly expanded galley that grows from 5.5 to 8 trolleys with a corresponding increase in inserts and workspace. The newly redesigned crew rest moves to the monument column immediately ahead of the front row of passengers, meaning that this aft facing galley space drops from four trolleys to three and a half, giving about an overall increase in two trolleys. Airbus is also taking the opportunity to introduce electro dimmable windows from Gentex, suggesting that these windows are twice as fast as previous versions. 100 times darker and block 99.99% .99 of visible light as well as ultraviolet light. Well, I have to say, Airbus put some really impressive engineering into creating more space without enlarging the actual structure of the airframe. However, this may come at a cost, and only time will tell how passengers feel about it as they will be jammed in the tube just a little more tighter especially with the narrower armrest between the seats. However, there is one glaring omission from what I am calling the new A350 Max, and that is what about the paint and skin defect problems plaguing the aircraft that has landed them in a bitter battle with the A350 launch customer Qatar Airways. In all their fanfare, Airbus makes no mention of how they will eventually address that, let alone tackle that particular defect. As a matter of fact, I did quite a bit of research, and as far as I can tell, so far Airbus has no answers for that problem yet. But I guess eventually they will figure it out. But in the meantime, they can always employ the Boeing method of duct tape. Yes, to the guy who was already typing the comment, I know it's aluminum speed tape, but duct tape is always funnier to say. Well, that's going to wrap it up for this edition of Maximus Aviation. As always, thank you for joining me, and if you haven't yet subscribed, I hope that you would at least consider it. And on your way out, please be sure to like, share, and ring the bell so you can be notified whenever we release new content. And remember, leave the rubber on the runway, and your troubles on the ground. And I will see you next time, in the air. Yeah, this is Maximus.